Hi, this is Kevin Thomas with the At Home Film Festival, bringing you a week of film festivals. Frameline starts September 17th, San Francisco's film festival, and actually it's the oldest gay film festival ever, and Cinema Diverse is running concurrently. How do you choose? Maybe you don't have to, you can just watch them at home, or if you're local, you can go to the drive-in. This is not the preview of this year's Frameline. This is a couple years ago, but um, Glenn or Glenda the Good Witch is played by Peggy Legs, and she suddenly passed away this week, and it was devastating to the gay and drag community. So I did want to pay tribute in my own little way, so I'm using this preview to promote Frameline. Um, this is for you, Peggy. Thanks for all that you've done for us. But back to the festival. Um, if you want to go to Frameline and learn more, it's on frameline.org. Um, but if you're in town, there's going to be a drive-in movie. But if you're in the Southern California, you can go to drive-in regularly for Cinema Diverse this year. Although they have a lot of screeners at home, Cinema Diverse is my favorite Southern California film festival. It's such a small, great community there. Um, they have a lot of fun movies, just like Frameline. I love going every year. I've gotten so involved that I even have my own little program there. Hopefully you'll see me back next year in person, but this year you'll see me virtually. Now on with the festival. Let's start with shit and champagne. Don't think I'm offering you those things. I'm starting with Frameline's opening night film, September 17th at, at a drive-in theater in Concord. Only $26 a car load. Don't think you could sneak a lot of people in your trunk. They know that from the 50s, okay? But Shit and Champagne is written, directed, and stars the amazing Darcy Drollinger, who also happens to deliver meals on heels, runs a nightclub, God knows when she sleeps. But Darcy brought back most of her great cast from her drag exploitation play. Um, that's why I know it's gonna be good, because I saw the play, but not the movie yet. It has the greatest troupe of actors that San Francisco's ever seen, with the addition of Alaska Thunderfuck in the movie. So if you want to enjoy a little shit and champagne, you should seek out this movie. Another really good movie that actually surprised me, Cicada. This movie started out ultra sexual, which is fine. But to me, if I'm going to watch someone doing it quite a bit, I'll probably just download porn. But then it takes a turn. The lead guy, Matthew Pfeiffer, who also wrote and directed it, he actually kind of falls for this guy and they start a relationship that seems real and earnest and honest. Everything they say to each other I thought was true and real. And the, his co-star, Sheldon D. Brown, also um, co-wrote the script, so maybe this is real and taken from their own lives. But I did find this to be an amazing film and I'm so impressed with him. It's at frame line, but you could also see it, guess where? At Cinema Diverse. But speaking of sex, then we have Dry Wind. Now, I went into this movie knowing it's sexually driven, so it's not like I'm going to rate it the same way I did Cicada. That surprised me. But this is sort of a Walter Mitty story of a man who might be having a lot of sex or might be fantasizing about sex. Sometimes we never know. But what we do know is the acting is great, it's well photographed, and the sex is so hot. It's very erotic, um, it's fetish, it dives into every area you'd ever imagine in sex. It kind of takes the fantasies from your brain and brings them onto the screen. I really thought in many ways, no one's acting, this is real sex. And I'm probably right, but I don't care because it was good and it even helped the story overall. So do not miss Dry Wind unless you're a straight man who doesn't like to see a lot of naked gay male penises on screen doing things to each other. Then there's The Goddess of Fortune. This story makes turns I wasn't aware of. It's about two happily gay married men who end up taking in a friend's children while she goes off to have a procedure done. And you would think it's gonna be maybe a three men and a baby or something like that, but it's not. They do bond with the kids. This whole community um, becomes a family. And there's some secrets that happen that we forgot about, but the movie then makes us revisit those and learn more about the characters. I really enjoyed The Goddess of Fortune, and I hope you do too. Also in our foreign category is Alice Jr. One extra thing I love about not just this movie, but the fact that Frameline has included a lot of movies with younger youth gays because 
We're born this way, so it doesn't always have to be reflective of a 50-year-old. But Alice Jr. is your typical high school kid, yet she has an internet following. Maybe a lot of those do. But it's, it's so real because she has her normal problems with not just being trans, but being bullied and helping friends and finding friendships. It also has a lot of multimedia use and animation, so it really elevates this film to something super special. So I would check out Alice Jr. Talk about your dramatic, heartfelt films. Although I haven't seen every movie in the festival, hard to do that, but Gossamer Folds is what I consider the best of the fests. This movie just is so heartwarming. It's about some family that moves to a little small town. There's a trans woman next door. They want their son to stay away from her because she's a deviant pervert. He, though, is smart enough to realize she's just a person like he is, and they develop a great relationship. Um, this movie is so well, so well written that director Lisa Donato, she wrote a previous movie I love called Signature Moves, but she didn't write this. She just directed it. She probably saw this screenplay by Bridget Flannery and said, oh my goodness, I need to direct that movie because it is start to finish. This is a great film. Now, I don't even have a preview for this next movie. That's how current it is. It's also playing at Cinema Diverse, by the way. It's Through the Glass Darkly. So I just have to show the summer frameline preview while I'm talking because I don't have a preview to show you, but this movie, picture this. Take a puzzle, pour out all the pieces, and find out they don't fit, but you know they have to. So you keep needing to move things around, and that's what I had to do with this great movie from Laura Fash. Laura, I think your movie's amazing, and you just gotta keep making more. Um, oh my God, what's it? Robin Lively gives an amazing performance. And um, I was completely moved. I bit my fingers through the whole thing. Look, no nails. It's really a riveting, riveting film. I just love this movie. So you should love it too. Through the Glass Darkly, seek it out. So that covers the movies at Frameline, which is from September 17th to the 27th. You can get tickets at frameline.org. Um, there's one at the drive-in shit and champagne, but there's a lot of good content. You should read more on my website, realkev.com, because I featured more stories than I did here. Now, that kind of takes care of our seven movies for Frameline this year with a little love for Cinema Diverse. But Cinema Diverse is also screening today, September 13th, Breaking Fast. It's at the Drive-In Theater. This played at Frameline Summer Festival. This movie I really, really loved. It's a great, slow-developing love story about people that have, I don't want to say prejudices, preconceived notions. And they break through those and develop a beautiful bond that is a very tender, wonderful story. You could definitely catch that this weekend if you're in the Palm Springs area. Two movies I've talked about at Nauseam, but since you have to wait till September 17th for the Frameline Film Festival, you might as well wait with something. So this is now available on demand. Um, you could buy it, you could rent it. It was at the Frameline Summer Showcase. It's Stage Mother. I've given it a lot of covers. All I'm gonna say now is now is your chance to all watch it and help me get Jackie Weaver Oscar nominated for Best Actress. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Another movie I've given a lot of coverage to at film festivals but you can now watch it at home. You could rent it, you could buy it, is The Garden Left Behind. One would think I'm a producer of this film because I talk about it so much, but it is really my favorite film of 2019 film festivals. Now it's available for you to watch. It's very moving. Um, it ripped my heart out. I can't believe every time I talk about it, I start to choke up. But it's, it's that moving and it, it sticks with you just like that. It's very current now. It's about trans lives matters, but it's more than that. It's a human story about a person's struggle and trying to find her own place in the world. And she needs to find it. And you need to find this film and share this movie with everybody you know. And this movie really needs a wide audience. So they have a great grassroots campaign. If you do like the movie, make a little video of your review and post it and tag The Garden Left Behind. In the meantime, I'm going to leave the film festivals behind, but I'll see you next week. This is Kevin Thomas. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.